Hi everyone, I'm Podrick and I'm about to be a second year studying Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic at Gonvalin Keys. So, interviews. That scary elephant in the room. Let's talk about it, Dim. Hi, my name is Cynthia and I'm a second year at Keys studying PBS. So for me, I remember my interview very clearly. It was something that I had stressed a lot about going into it but I honestly came out of it feeling really accomplished and had a lot of fun during the interview as well. For the PBS interview, you can use a more biological approach or a more social and developmental approach as well. So I think the interview is a great way to show off your background and the knowledge that you come into psychology with. I know there's this veal of mystery about interviews, about interviewers asking bizarre and ridiculous questions that students can't answer and you have so many internet articles written about this but actually with a few, with a few helpful tips I think we can completely annihilate that fit and uh, let's get right into it shall we? Hi I'm Grace and I study law at Keys. During the interviews you should think out loud. They want to see how you think so therefore if you think in your head the entire time they can't register that. So if they ask you a question you have no idea at all speak through your thought process then at least they know where you're going and they try, can try and assist you. You do not need any legal knowledge in law interviews, none at all. They're actually testing how you think analytically. Also I would say that Cambridge um, interviewers are there to help you. They want to check what you're doing. They don't want you to have a terrible experience at the end of the day. So therefore, if they, you think they're leading you in a direction, maybe go with them. It might be actually very helpful to you. When you get those more technical questions, um, definitely talk through what you're doing. So for me, I had two math problems and for both of them, the interviewer wanted me to explain my process and explain each step that I was taking to get to the answer. And this serves two great purposes. The first is that it allows the interviewer to see how you think and how you're getting to the answer. And the second is that if you're struggling with anything, so if you stumble upon the wrong answer or you get stuck along the way, by explaining your process, they can see what it is you are doing and sort of pinpoint where it is they think you went wrong and then help guide you to getting the right answer in the end. So make sure to just keep talking, it can only benefit you. Hi, I'm Maddie and I study medicine. You can ask for help and you can ask for time. So if you're asked a question and your mind just goes blank and you're a little bit flummoxed, you can just say, would it be okay if I have a minute to think about that? And that just gives you time to gather your thoughts together and provide a coherent answer rather than just a ramble if you were to answer straight away. And even if the person says, oh, no, you can't, which none of my interviewers did, then you'd still have a few seconds to think about it whilst you're asking the question. You can also say, oh, I know this, 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 but I'm stuck here. And then they might give you a little prompt to push you over that bit. And then you can work from there and you might know the rest of it. It might just be that tiny little bit of knowledge that you're missing. And that's totally fine. Hi, my name's Dan, and I'm just about to start my third year of maths at Keys. A lot of people have already mentioned about thinking out loud during interviews as being really important, and it's crucial for maths as well. One way you can practice it is by providing a sort of out loud commentary on some practice problems you're doing alongside your written working. Uh, you can find these kind of problems in other admissions tests, so you might already be doing the MAT for other applications you're doing, that's a good source of problems. Um, and also, while you're doing these kind of problems, if you ever get stuck, Think about what the little steer you might need is to get to the answer or just what the most sort of uh, problematic step is for you. Uh, that's really useful in terms of asking for help in interviews because uh, the point of interviews is um, you get stuck and they can learn about how easy you are to teach and how well you respond to their advice. So if you're able to direct them as to what advice to give you, uh, then it's going to help you in sort of progressing as an account on account of their advice and that's what they want. They want people who are going to... You know, um, respond well to their teaching methods. That is almost exactly how teaching is done at Cambridge. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The interview is not a, a place where you get interrogated. It's a place for fruitful discussion. So if you have a thing that you would like to say, say it, because they, they, the, the interviewer will appreciate that very, very much.
Also, in a moment, uh, a few people will speak about practice interviews. Um, helpful if you can get one, but if you can't, uh, you can still get some of the benefits by just talking to someone you live with or a friend um, about through a, talk them through a problem that you're uh, solving. So um, they might understand absolutely none of the maths, but they can still point out things like, are you freezing when you get stuck? Uh, try and avoid doing that. And uh, are you just sort of generally losing your train of thought and sounding incoherent a lot? And you can, people can normally spot that even if they don't understand any of the words. Um, so that, that you can get some useful feedback that way from a couple of people by talking them through the problems with you. Hey, my name is Precious. I'm a second year architect here at Keys. For architecture, it's really important that you know how to present your portfolio. So I spent a lot of time with teachers, like flicking through my portfolio, looking through and learning how to present my work and also receive questions and criticism at the same time. Um, I think it's really good practice if you can just run that through with any art or design teacher um, because doing it, from the doing it for the first time can be quite daunting. So getting some practice before is really helpful. I personally got my biology and chemistry teachers to help me, which I found really, really useful. Um, they were a little bit reluctant to start with because they hadn't done any interviewing before, but it's really useful even if they've had no prior experience because they have that extended knowledge from the degrees that they've done. So they can add bits to your answers. They can say, maybe you shouldn't say that. And it's just really useful. I also had a friend's dad interview me um, who had done interviews at his school um, before. And that was also really useful because if you can do it in front of someone that you know, where it's a little bit awkward, then you're gonna be much, much calmer in front of someone that you don't know. Hi, I'm Daphne. I'm a first year history student at Keys. Uh, don't do so many of them that your answers end up rehearsed because your interviewers do hundreds of interviews over their whole careers. They can identify when people have rehearsed their answers and it really does show when you've rehearsed your answers because the passion doesn't come through and I strongly believe that that passion is the most important part of any interview. The most important thing you can do is show that you care and be able to talk about something that matters to you and that actually interests you and that will come across um, to your interviewer. So don't worry about, oh, do I sound passionate enough or anything like that, but just try not to rehearse too much because it will become clearer um, that you're saying what you think you should say rather than what you actually feel. Be yourself, not a practice version of it. At the end of the day, um, everyone can go in there and recite a perfect version of themselves and everything they've ever done. Whereas only really there's you that can show them who you are, how you think, why you should make a good lawyer and essentially why you should succeed at Cambridge. It's so important to just be yourself because if you go in and pretend that you're like the Cambridge stereotype, then you're essentially lying to the interviewers and they're not necessarily looking for that. There is no actual stereotype. There's so many different people there. Um, so, like, I'm from the north. If I'd gone in and started speaking in a posh accent or changing it, then it would have just, it would have put me on more on edge. It would have made it more difficult. And then I would have got there and they would have been like, mm, you're not the person we interviewed. So I think you just have to kind of try and just be you as much as you can. Another thing that I did was definitely go over my um, personal statement. And this is something that is definitely recommended for all interviews, all course interviews. Um, if there is a book or a psychologist that you specifically mentioned that kind of stands out in your personal statement, I would make sure to review that information, review what you wrote as well, so that when they ask you about it, you have up-to-date information and you don't forget what you said. Make sure that everything that you put in your personal statement is correct. So if you said that you read something or listened to something or watched something, make sure you did before you go to an interview. It's not guaranteed that everything in your personal statement will come up or even that anything in your personal statement will come up, but you don't want to be in a position where you're asked a question about the one thing you said you read but you haven't. So make sure that you've done that. Um, but don't reread everything that you put on your personal statement because I think that's a bit of a waste of time. Chances are you'll remember most of it or you'll remember the bits that were most important to you um, for your own personal learning journey. Maybe you can read over your personal statement and you can think about um, how one thing that you did led onto another. Think about a thought journey or a learning journey 
why did you read one thing after something else or what did you what did you gain from what you read like engage with what you did to prepare for your application and a good technique that I heard from a different Cambridge vlogger actually before I came to Cambridge was that um, what they would do is put a question mark after every single sentence and trying to and then trying to justify why they wrote what they wrote. So that's another good way to go about it. For example, my personal statement was more language oriented, hence I got more language oriented questions. What you're probably going to get in ASNAC are different stimuli, and stimuli are essentially just a fancy word for, for example, um, you, you'll be given a piece of poetry, a, an excerpt um, or from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle maybe, um, you'll be given a genealogy maybe, it depends again on your personal statement, and you'll be asked to interpret that. You'll be given some time prior to the interview to, to prepare a bit and then, you know, ask uh, and, and explain, obviously, to the lecturers what you what you think this means. Uh, for my architecture interview, I spent some time reading up on what was happening in the profession at the time. Um, and it was a really great way for me to have case studies that I could link to points I was trying to make. Um, because nobody has quite studied architecture before, there isn't an A-level in architecture. Um, so it's really nice to have something to kind of pin your point down and give proof to a statement you're trying to make. Um, so yes, I read up on some buildings, some architects, some spaces um, before my interview that I could use in the interview. So whatever point came up, I could use those. I took AP Psychology at high school here in the US and the days leading up to the interview I spent revising those notes, going through, pulling out key terms. Um, I also tried remembering some psychologists and their unique perspectives and theories so that I could bring them up in the interview. Generally, um, going over the content and the knowledge that you have is good enough. They do not expect you to know all the answers and to know psychology really well. So just focus on what you know and remembering that so when asked a question, you can answer to the best of your ability. Uh, one thing that's a bit unique about the Keys Maths interview is that you'll be given an email 10 to 14 days before uh, with a couple of topics that they would like you to prepare and think a bit deeply about. Um, so you pick, you pick one of them and they'll give you some resources to help you and that's a good way to sort of focus your preparation in the sort of week leading up to the interview about, about what to think about. Um, but obviously they're not going to just ask you straightforward exercises or recall about them. Um, it's going to ask you to think a bit more deeply, so uh, do think as broadly as possible about them before you come to interview. With architecture you have two interviews. You have your architecture and portfolio interview and your general interview. Um, for my architecture and portfolio interview, I made sure that I was really settled with my personal statement, that I'd done my research into the theories that I'd mentioned in my personal statement and all the artists um, that I'd mentioned as well. And I think also just in general, like you can prepare for interviews um, by knowing lots of stuff, but it's they're here to test the way you think. The interview is not a factual recall exam. You don't need to revise every fact on your course or every fact from every book or podcast or film or whatever you've looked at. Um, it's not important that you know exactly every detail because no one does. Uh, the most important thing is that you understand what is important to you and what you know you know well and you can talk about it and you can engage and you can discuss um, so it's more about quality than quantity, both in terms of uh, what you uh, learn about, what you, the way that you engage with it and the way that you can talk about it. You could talk for hours and hours about something and say nothing, and that's not going to get you anywhere. You want to make sure that you can speak about it in a way that has value, in a way that will start discussion and show your interviewer that you do really care about what you're saying. I think focuses on a lot of sources that are either incomplete, um, sometimes we deal with manuscript evidence that's been tampered with, uh, 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 manuscripts that have been rewritten. Uh, what's the methodology here? And obviously people, the, the, the academic interviewing you, won't expect you to come up with brilliant you know, answers that they've never heard of, uh, but they just want you to 
to think on your feet and really kind of engage with the different sorts of methodology of in ASNAC because ASNAC focuses, like I said, on a type of history where there are holes, um, holes in evidence, holes in, you know, certain manuscripts go missing. And so how would you deal with that? It's a really good idea to wear something that you feel comfortable in. Something maybe that you've worn before, that you know doesn't rub, that you know isn't like you don't have to keep pulling it down because you don't want to be thinking about that whilst you're in the interview because that can take your, your mind away from the questions that they're asking if you're like, oh, maybe my skirt needs pulling down a little bit or, ow, oh, this really hurts here. Um, so I would advise wearing something that you've worn before. Now, one of the things that you will definitely be asked uh, and I think is it just goes without saying is why and that goes for any Cambridge degree I suppose but in ASNAC it's all the more relevant I would say why did you decide to study ASNAC when it's such a niche degree it focuses on such a niche geographical area and on such a niche time in history why is it that you're here and um, obviously no wrong answers there um, but be prepared to be asked that question. So good luck with your interview. And just remember, you chose to do this. You love your subject. And remember that. Keep that in mind and you'll do great. Good luck.